We're back. Sorry, we just uh, had a little slight technical problem. I would like to announce the winner of our previous week, which was recorded our Ask Virati 103rd episode, which was recorded live from Athens with the Athens Plaza HR director, our friend Thanos Yanagouras. And our winner, our dear friends, is Georgios Christodoulakis. And Georgios Christodoulakis will win a dinner and a stay for two at the Athens Plaza Hotel, which belongs to the Bardino Yanitz family. It is based in Sindam, located in Sindama Square. I think you know the hotel, yeah. eh? Excellent. Dear friends and fans, I would now like to welcome once again our friend Stavros Ioannou, who has been very kind uh, to invite us here at the Grand Thornton head offices. And uh, Stavros has uh, studied business and finance. And I truly believe, having met him a few years ago, having had many conversations with him, that he will not only do justice to the Ask Virati episode, but we will also learn a lot from him. So Stavros, welcome, and it's good to have you here. Thank you, Michalis. Well, it's Thanks good to have us here. <laughs> Let's start with our first question of the day, which comes from Katerina Kiprianou. Katerina is a loyal friend and a fan, and she's asking the following. Dear Stavros, which are the top favorite interview questions and what are the top two qualities of an exceptional employee? So what are your top favorite interview questions, Stavros? And what are the two top qualities of an exceptional employee? Thank you, Katarina, for this question. Although I haven't been to an interview for a long, <laughs> a long time, as you would appreciate, my favorite question is um, what values do you believe in as a person? And secondly, how do you live those values on a daily basis? both in your personal lives and at work. Excellent. And is there a right answer or wrong answer to this question, Stavros? I don't think there is not. There is. It's, just a, it's just a question that um, I like to ask, uh, obviously depending on the level of uh, recruitment uh, which we're talking about, as, as, a, as means by un in understanding more the, the person who sits in that hot chair for that 15, 20 minute interview. The person uh, rather than the professional? Yes, yes. Excellent, yes. excellent. So it's all about values. And so Stavros, what are your top two qualities of an exceptional employee? You told us about the questions on values. What are the two top qualities of an exceptional employee? Uh, in my opinion, that is respect and agility. Re respect and agility, excellent, excellent. So we have values, respect, and agility coming from the managing partner of Grand Thornton Cyprus. Let me take you on to our second question of the day, which comes from Karima Ben Otman. And Karima is asking the following question. Dear Stavros, what are the top three habits or qualities a person should acquire to succeed in their business? A great question, Karima. Um, as I said before, uh, in my previous uh, answer, uh, respect, agility, and leadership. That's my top three. Respect, agility, and leadership. So I can understand respect, I can understand agility, I can understand how you can measure it, but how do you measure leadership, Stavros? Michal, it's, it's, it's my great belief that uh, leaders are found everywhere in the organizations, at all levels. You have leaders, uh, regardless of the rank uh, at which they uh, belong at that time. I'll answer that by, by giving you a, a, a small example. Please, of everyday life. do so. Uh, assume there are two colleagues, two trainees, working on a, an assignment with a deadline on Monday morning, and they're working late on Friday. Uh, to me, uh, the person who appreciates that their colleague has a family event, like a family wedding, a family birthday, and needs, needs to leave earlier on Friday to get ready for that, and says, for example, Maria, go home, prepare for that, I'll cover you. Wow. That's when you exhibit leadership. It encaptures all the values that we discussed before. We have re you respect the individual, you are a responsible person, you are agile in your thinking, all of that. Wow. Captured by the leadership. You turned it on its head. I thought you were going to say the person who's a leader is the one who stays behind, forgets all about uh, what he has or she has to do, and does the work for either Grant Thornton or for their organization. <laughs> but that's, there's a leader for you, my dear friends, uh, my friend Samuel Sianu. Uh, we have our friend from London. He's saying progressing from a normal employee to a team leader, which is the number one trait we need to improve in order to lead and inspire. Progressing from a normal employee to a team leader, which is the number one character trait we need to improve 
in order to lead and inspire responsibility responsibility and uh, when you say responsibility we have to be responsible for our acts and also for the, yeah. their so for our team yes, yes. Makes sense. yes. i think panayotis your uh, answer has come in uh, straightforward in one word i'm going to get to your questions and uh, because costas also an engineer from Silicon Valley is asking two questions. We're going to get back to them in a while. Let me go on with the question of Christina Gileos. Christina Gileos is from Larnaga, a very good friend, and she's asking the following. Dear Stavros, are there any current changes in the areas of tax, accounting, advisory services that can be translated into challenges? And if there are changes in tax, accounting and advisory services, how is Grant Thornton addressing them? It's a great question, Christina. I'll try and answer it in the following way, there, we, have, we do face a big challenge um, as a profession. Uh, I will not concentrate so much on the actual service line, but the global trends which the accounting profession has to follow. Uh, today, as we speak, the global trends are uh, globalization, <coughs> the continuous war for talent, digitalization, automation, these are challenges which we face now and we will face more in the future. So the profession and we as Grant Thornton have to face those, those uh, challenges. I will summarize all of these <coughs> with the following. There will be a clear shift and there is a clear shift from compliance to advisory services Excellent. when it comes to the profession. So, um, we as Grant Thornton have to address this and we are addressing it by recruiting the right individuals. And I mean right individuals in terms of their mindset, their values, their, their responsibilities. Values, their responsibilities mm -hmm. as, yeah. I, as I said before, uh, we give great emphasis on training, training for those values, training for softer skills in an attempt to have an all rounded team made up of consultants and advisors, as opposed to somebody that can tick off a tax return or can do standard uh, um, audits. So from compliance, we go to advisory, from compliance to advisory. And uh, since there is something that I forgot to mention, that uh, Stavro Siganu has been very kind to offer uh, two hours of consulting or two hours of meeting with him and his team, uh, the people who has, he has just mentioned, for two winners of ours. So each winner can spend approximately one hour here at the Grant Thornton Cyprus head offices and they can discuss any ideas they have with Stavros and his team. We're going to be having a draw at the end of uh, this episode and we're going to be announcing the winners shortly next week on our 105th episode. Is that great? Yeah. Excellent. Let me see if we have any more comments. Panayotis is saying, I think my question is answered. Yes, it is. And we have some questions from Costas. Uh, I will come back to your questions in a while, Costas, because some of them are going to be answered just right now. Question comes from Stathis Tassis. He's uh, an insurance agent. Uh, he's also great at what he does. And he's asking four questions in a row. Let me start with the first one. First and foremost, what are you, what are you doing to prevent the loss of your best customers? Stathis, I, I, what, what we are doing, what we're trying to do every day is be next to them and listen. Listening, in my mind, is a skill that we should be practicing more and more each, each day. And I think that applies to, to our customers. If you're close to them, if you listen, understand their needs, understand their business, that's how you get sticky with them. They value your opinion and services more. And therefore, you prevent, you try to prevent the loss. So in other words, and I love your reply, Stavros, you don't prevent the loss, but you make sure that you keep them by having, exactly. by having your ears open, two ears and one mouth, as we've said many times in our speeches. Excellent. Second question from Stathis Tassis, before I go on to Gostas' questions, what questions do you ask your prospects and customers that your competition isn't asking? As I said in my previous question, it's, it's, it's a matter of listening as opposed to asking, asking more questions. Listening, understanding their needs, and try to be next to them. Try to be accessible to them. I don't. I think in our industry, it's very difficult to differentiate the final product, which could be a tax return, it could be a valuation report, it could be an audit opinion. But what you can greatly differentiate in is the way you go about in delivering that service. 
Excellent. So looking after your client needs, being next to them and um, all the time listening to their needs is all about how you deliver that service. Uh, and that hopefully is something that can differentiate you from the competition. So you're benchmarking yourself with yourself instead of benchmarking yourself with your competition many a times by listening, acknowledging, uh, being flexible, accessible to, accessible them. to them, which is very important. Uh, third question from the same person, Statistas is, how do you help your customers build their business? I think that's kind of answered by my, my, my previous question. It's not about helping them to build their business, it's helping them in everything they, they, they need. Uh, so again, by being next to them, uh, understanding their needs, uh, and understanding, of course, their busyness, it is something that is, is fundamental to our culture and we should be doing more and more. Uh, and hopefully within that, um, the, the businesses will, will grow. Excellent. And I think Costas uh, Stavros has just answered your first question, which is what is the competitive advantage of Grant Thornton? If you would if you'd like to add something onto that, you can let me know. If not, I think you have just answered what is the competitive advantage of Grant Thornton. I think that's what we try to be our, our, our competitive advantage. It's the way we deliver our service. No surprises to the client when it comes to our, our fees and charges, everything. Just leave our corporate values, as I said at the beginning, be next to them be flexible to them, be, be, be approachable, be accessible, and of course, understanding their business. Excellent. And all the things that Stavros is saying, and uh, he's saying it not only for himself, but also for his team, I can vouch for it because I have seen Stavros in action. I see how I feel uh, around this particular professional, and that's the reason I invited him onto this show, because it's not only about being a great professional, but also being a genuine human being, and that's it. Uh, the second question, which comes from Costas, before I go to our last question of the day, is why an employee? Why should an employee select Grant Thornton instead of it com or instead of its competitors? Which I think they are allowed to select them, but why should they select Grant Thornton? I think I think they should select Grant Thornton first of all if they believe it's right for them, and it's our job to make, make, making sure that they understand what we what we offer. Um, when you talk to um, an individual in Grand Thornton uh, means and has a lot to add to Grand Thornton. We are not institutionalized by any means. We are trying to get to our destination. So we want members um, of our team to be people with uh, that they can roll up their sleeves. Uh, they can make a difference on a daily basis. So we listen to them and we provide them a platform that they can build their future dreams uh, as opposed to just being a number uh, which usually happens with, with bigger organizations. So they do have a contribution Excellent. to make. Before we make any recruitment for any level, we do think twice uh, and we buy you and we, we have a rigorous uh, selection uh, regime. So I think that's a difference. They can really make a difference at Grand Thornton. Excellent. And something to add here, if they have a wedding, a colleague of theirs will stand <laughs> and uh, help them out and they can go to their wedding, correct? Yes. Saturday or Sunday <laughs> or even Monday. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Let me roll up to see if we have any more questions coming up from our friends. Oh, we do have. Uh, we do have more questions. Uh, we have a questions from Christodoulos Stavri. Christodoulos Stavri is a young uh, student. Uh, very wise for his age and a good friend. He says, how can you become significant in an unsteadily environment? Let's say that we discuss about companies. How can you become significant? Uh, I, I'm not sure if the question is clear, but in an unstable environment, how can you make an impact, let's say, for example? Yes. As a company. Maybe. Yes, as a company. Yeah. Well, if you have a good proposition and a good offering, that there is a clear sort of gap uh, in the marketplace. I think by selecting um, the various advisors next to you, uh, assuming the business idea is valid and, and, and validated, you can still, I think, make a, make a difference if you understand the mechanics of the, uh, of the market. It's a very difficult question to answer, um, but again, it ha you have to have a, prov a proven idea you have to uh, identify a clear gap in the marketplace, either in the marketplace, in the offering, or the way 
in your the delivery of such a service. Correct. Totally correct. Totally correct. I was discussing very recently uh, in Athens during the workshop I've done for the Varidinoyanis group. We we're discussing companies that have failed and we have gone through various companies, around 10, 15 companies that have failed uh, from Nutriat uh, to companies in the, insurance agent, in the insurance sector. And then we were discussing about companies who have made it within the Greek financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that uh, all these companies had in common is that they had a clear strategy. They were flexible, resilient, as you said before, and they managed to break through the cloud. It's a bit of a paradox here because, you know, in, in crisis, and difficult environments, your strategy might you change. You have to make yeah. investments, yes. and that's the part. You know, most of the time, people say, "It's there's a, there's a crisis here. Let's hold back." But if you don't invest, assuming you you have identified those gaps, you need to be investing in order to deliver, and and fill in those gaps. And that's how you turn uh, the bad sort of uh, environment into a into a positive one for your own company. If you do have the money, that is, uh, because course, sometimes big, with what happened in Cyprus, it's a big challenge. It's a big uh, challenge. Fine. Our friend Sevi Zenios, uh, he's a great salesman. He works for Bionic. If you are not buying your products from Bionic, Evis will be very happy that I told you that you should look into Bionic Stavros. Evis is saying the following. Why the big four? Ain't it discriminating and unlawful competition? Should people be looking only at the big four? Is Grant Thornton in the big four? No, Grant Thornton is not in the big four. Grant Thornton does not want to be in the big four and Grant Thornton cannot make it into the big four. It's something that the big four um, as you quietly asking that they are institutionalized, they are respected, they're big services. I mean, big, big firm that they offer a range of services. They offer them they're really good at what they do. So what uh, makes you different from the big four? I think it's, it's, it's what I said before. It's the delivery of our service and the way we go about delivering that service. We can do uh, uh, the same services. We can, we can deliver the same product. We can de deliver the same results it's just just the way you go about we go about it. i once read that in big companies you are simply a number not in all of them but in smaller companies you are a human being <laughs> yeah it's it's um th this is true i mean i've got i've got very close friends across all the uh, the big four both in yeah. cyprus and 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 abroad it's just just different cultures i guess different cultures. our friend athos antoniadis is asking who was your favorite teacher at, uh, in the english school and i have a feeling that you two were classmates or something or friends uh, athos antoniadis yeah the name rings a bell <laughs> uh, my favorite teacher always has to be the maths teacher the maths teacher <laughs> uh, Barbara Mihailin. Barbara Mihailin. <laughs> ah it, it, does it have to do with uh, does athos is his athos favorite teacher as well or not only yours I don't know. you don't know but you know Athos, huh? Yes, I do. Athos is a great guy, a very good friend, and uh, I like him a lot. Thank you, Athos, for being live here for the Ask Virati 104th show. So let's go to our last and final question, except if a question pops up. I left this question last. It comes from Statistasis. It also has to do with your personal and professional life. And the question is the following. How do you attain and maintain a positive attitude in your organization and in your personal life? Knowing you, I know how you attain a positive attitude in your personal life, but you can go ahead and tell our viewers. Studies, thank you for this again. Um, I'll start with the easy one. Uh, I always have been an optimistic person and, and um, I'm trying to maintain this positivity by uh, exercising and ma making sure that my physical health, my emotional health and my intellectual health uh, are my top priorities. Uh, and you know balancing when and having a, a good work-life balance I think that's uh, how you achieve how I achieve uh, to to remain positive in this uh, in these times and a good diet as well huh? because <laughs> I've eaten with you the last uh, four or five times and uh, also a good diet my nutrition is, your be nutrition very proud. is well yes if your nutrition <laughs> is on there she will be very proud let me say something that i think you might not know stathis is an olympian he has represented cyprus in the olympics in australia oh, fantastic. many many years ago fantastic. so he, I'm sure he will agree with he you. will surely agree with you so how do you attain and maintain a positive attitude in your organization and with that we close our 104th episode we try to do that by I love your encouraging a culture of trust and a culture of authenticity. I'm a great believer in the saying that a team is not a 
group of people working together or a team of people playing together. A team is a group of people that they trust each other. Wow. If we try to do that, and the more we do about encouraging that and having the support of colleagues that they trust each other and an environment where people can be authentic, you can maintain the positive attitude in your organization. So a team is a group of people not working together or playing together, but a group of people who trust each other. Excellent. And I welcome also Alexandros from Athens, Greece. He says, as we discussed in Athens, because we discussed with Alexandros in Athens, that the key, smiling is the key factor in every business. As his grandfather used to say to him, if you have a smile, you'll have a job. Okay. And I think uh, both my guests, myself, and also all of you, we're very positive and smiling all the way. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I would love to see you all back here on the 12th of December with yet another very interesting guest. Thank you very much, Stavros. You've been great. Thank you. Thank you.